And so where the river d- dissolves the chalk, it leaves behind these flint nodules and they can be quite large. Um, and they get tossed around in the river and they shatter. And they become gravel on the side of the river. But um, we can just see here, we've got chalk right here. So in terms of the river, it's cutting directly down into the chalk bedrock. And we were saying, because when we were talking before, right at the beginning, we were looking at the different layers. We are talking about how there's a sense of going back through time, right from the living, breathing, growing stuff on the surface down through into the, um, well, hurt down here into the chalk, which is millions of years old, isn't it? And if, and if in that way, climate change had that natural background to it, I think, Stuart, you've been doing a lot of work and experience where some of the activities we've been up to uh, at various times through our history in archaeology, we're seeing the effect of fairly large scale industrial processes. And what effect is that having on the landscape, particularly in the north, for instance? Well, it was interesting that Carenza mentioned flooding there because, it, in a way, that, that sparked my research interests in that area. And that I was asked some years ago to look at the impact of flooding. Well, if you use the sort of metaphor of perhaps moving into a new house, and when you get the keys and you open the door and start having a look around, you find little things that have been left behind. Not like important things, just tiny things like a, perhaps a discarded receipt for some tools or um, a postcard that's sort of been forgotten and spawned behind a radiator. If we take an archaeological perspective, those things can become clues. Looking at it in plan, you can see you've got these two extremely wide but relatively shallow embrasures which have this buttress underneath. This buttress is actually, actually hollow. And you'll also notice that these embrasures point at oblique angles out from the pillbox, you know, which is it's rather odd. So not only is this a, just a gorgeous looking medieval castle, we also have evidence of a siege on the outside. These siege tanks are directly inspired by a tablet depicting an Assyrian siege vehicle from the second century BC, I believe if my memory serves me well. So we used these siege vehicles when we were attacking this castle. And now the castle is under a different ownership to the one it was before. Again, highlighting the politics of this digital space and how events such as a siege can become moments in history. It's a funny old world, isn't it, eh? You know, I've been in archeology span now for what, 50 years. It's a devil of a long time. But actually, there was an organisation, a body, the Council for British Archaeology, the CBA, which has been in archaeology longer than I have. That was set up soon after the war as a voice to promote archaeology. But more than that, it was set up to educate you, the public, in the ways of archaeology. And from those simple beginnings, the whole thing has escalated to the point that we've got now the Festival of Archaeology, an annual celebration of archaeology in Britain.